The topic is really important because we all remember the queues in the uh, pharmacy stores that we used to have at the beginning of the war. And therefore, the question is at the same time very simple and, it, and very difficult. What is the status, the condition of Ukraine's pharmaceutical center during the war? Well, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to give um, comments on the Ukrainian pharmaceutical sector. All in all, we should realize that we have had a rather interesting dynamics of um, behavior of the pharmaceutical industry in uh, that was in January and February. 31% of growth, 45% of growth correspondingly in January and February because of COVID-19. And then a rapid fall in March, uh, minus 11%, and in April it was minus 31%. And this is in spite of the fact that um, there were large, there was a huge demand among residents for the drugs, in particular the drugs that um, are vital for human life, like alteroxin, insulin, and just to compare, you, you know the uh, story of alteroxin because the average consumption of alteroxin in the networks increased four times as compared to peaceful times. If we speak about other drugs, um, we should also realize that uh, residents are displaced along across the territory of Ukraine and beyond Ukraine. So if we speak about pharmacy store networks, at the beginning of the war, we used to have only 50% of uh, them working. A lot of networks have been destroyed. There are some pharmaceutical um, stores, um, who, or, uh, pharmacists who have left the country. Now the situation is a bit better, about 80%, which is about 16,200 drug stores operating. Pharmacists show a great level of heroism when we speak about the regions with active hostilities or the regions uh, which are constantly under shelling like Kharkiv and uh, the whole east and south of Ukraine, the Kalai region, I suppose. The industry keeps developing, producing drugs. The Ukrainian industry is uh, already almost reaching the pre-war uh, indicators. The consumer moods have changed, but at the same time it needs to be stated that the Ukrainian pharmaceutical sector is there. It keeps operating. It has shown its um, capacity to meet the needs of uh, residents and hospitals. And it will do its best for the patients, hospitals, the doctors to have all the essential drugs whenever needed taking into account the demand uh, and taking into account the number of wounded uh, soldiers, civilians, and also taking into account some chronic um, diseases, planned surgery, something which is still there in Ukraine. What about the groups of drugs that are now in deficit and um, as a result of what has this deficit come? Well, today I can state that there are specific categories of drugs which are probably unique or innovative. Um, this is related to uh, foreign producers of um, specific goods. And probably these drugs are not accessible in Ukraine or supply of which is uh, restricted uh, to Ukraine. And this is related to the complex logistic chains of supply. The drugs produced by Ukrainian companies as well as cases when some foreign goods are banned for production. Ukrainian pharmaceutical sector is capable of meeting all the needs and closing all the gaps to meet the needs of Ukrainian population. That's why we cannot speak about any specific category of uh, drugs that are in deficit now. We don't see this deficit and uh, just recently we have had the conference of uh, pharmacy store networks with producers and the Ministry of Health present there, distributors present there. They discussed a lot of issues related to logistics, uh, the costs of the pricing policy, uh, uh, but the issue of shortage of any category of drugs was not under discussion. And 
has this situation been affected by um, this connection of any turnover with Russia or Belarus? No, absolutely not. And what about the problem with certification of drugs coming from Europe? Has this process become more um, improved? Well, you know, the Ministry of Health has um, t proven to be a very dynamic and flexible organization. Unlike or contrary to our idea of red tape there, instead we can see efficient coordination, quick decision-making process, quick response, quick cooperation with all the market, provision of support to the market, which is also a very important element, in particular in the first months of the war, when there was the crisis of payment, the crisis of trust, but the Ministry of Health became the moderator, trying to regulate the relations between distributors, producers, and networks. And they managed to do this, which is a great uh, merit, a great achievement of the Ministry of Health. And the fact that the high demand and sudden shortages or restrictions um, that were in place have been liquidated um, also proves this. Drugs that are uh, in demand are supplied to Ukraine. The ministry keeps the permanent registry of drugs needed by Ukrainian consumers, by Ukrainian doctors. Therefore, this is communicated to our international partners at international meetings. So getting back to your question, I would like to point it out that the speed of registration of European drugs uh, well, uh, let me comment upon a specific situation we have just recently had. There was an order allowing to quickly register uh, drugs produced in Europe, but there was um, the discriminatory norm applied to Ukrainian producers. And the example here um, is uh, Darnitsa, because with Together with the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of the Council of National Council of Security and Defense, we uh, produced Karyadit. This is a drug to be used uh, in case of nuclear or radiation threat. It was to be produced very quickly, get registered very quickly, and the Ministry of Health was actively involved in this process of acceleration. They changed their order and they attached Ukrainian producers um, and made the registration um, process in Ukraine quicker. So I don't see any restrictions, any limitations for either foreign producers or Ukrainian producers, but we need to mention the law uh, 7313 that has just recently been passed. And this law primarily puts into question the activity of the companies that keep working in Russia. Thanks a lot. Let's hope that we will never need drugs uh, against nuclear threats. Uh, definitely not, but we need to have them. But the question is, how has the pharmaceutical sector changed, uh, taken into account the needs of the army? Because the army is definitely ordering larger amounts of specific categories of drugs, because a lot of men are in the front lines. And what has changed in this respect? Well, let me tell a couple of nuances here. If we speak about consumption, definitely these are infusion and ampule solutions. Ampule production has increased uh, by 21 times, uh, I'm sorry, 21% as compared to the pre-war times. As far as infusion solutions are concerned, the increase has been by 44%, which means that we have increased our capacity in amounts of production, and on the first days of war, that in itself was uh, transferring to all the Kiev hospitals, Kharkiv, uh, Mariupol hospitals, uh, Mikolaev hospitals, Chernihiv hospitals as well, a lot of drugs. It did it, sending the drugs to the places where they were needed on a free of charge basis, because back then there were no tools that were later established by the Cabinet of Ministers of Ukraine to pay for drug provision in a very quick and efficient way. Well, all in all, during the war, Darnitsa has provided assistance to more than 120 million hryvnias. 
this is over the period of 100 days uh, of the war. Actually, it goes for about 1 million hryvnias per day that we handed over to different state-owned uh, authorities, state-owned enterprises and state authorities. And at the same time, we have continued uh, paying taxes and we have paid more than 200 million uh, hryvnias of taxes uh, over this year. How do we keep, how do we retain our markets, including export markets, and what would be the pharmaceutical sector like after the war? Thank you for the question. This is a really complex issue because, first of all, we need to realize and to see, and I know that uh, Pablo Sharamada has had a speech today, uh, and we do realize the challenges that are related to risk assessment or assessment of riskiness of contracts with Ukraine. That's why let me stress it once again that there are some countries that do actively support us and we can see high quality interaction um, in terms of our continuation of our export provision to those countries. But at the same time, supply of drugs from Ukraine demands uh, additional involvement of our staff to ensure a secure process. Darnitsa's capacity um, enables to meet the needs of both Ukrainian and foreign consumers. And uh, during the war, we got the confirmation of the quality. Um, this is the Australian GMP certificate. We had been working at this for many years, trying to get the certificate. We've got the European certificate. We keep actively uh, supplying our drugs to the Middle East. And of course, these um, contracts are still there, but we need to remember that any sales or export of Ukrainian drugs stands for uh, currency proceeds and revenues for the countries that will enable to stabilize the exchange rate, to stabilize uh, revenues of currency to Ukraine, and this will also stand for the promotion of Ukrainian production. So we consider this to be a very important direction of development. But nevertheless, the Ukrainian market is interesting, is dynamic, we have a lot of consumers and we need to offer new solutions, new products for Ukrainian consumers. That's why we have not start, stopped our uh, research um, and R&D. And in March and April, we um, produced four new drugs. In June, we will have seven more and we will get registration certificates for them. So we didn't, have not stopped our R&D. And over the same period we have got, it was exactly on the 18th of March that we signed the contract with a medical patient pool for getting a license for the development of the generic version of Papslavid and its production. This is Papslavid Pfizer, which is used uh, to treat against COVID-19 and we ha are entitled to sell it in 95 countries of the world. That is a great opportunity. We are the only company in Ukraine uh, that has got uh, this uh, chance. If we speak about the future, probably distant future, you know, all those uh, submissions of applications were taking place in December, took place in December and November last year. So, in April, we got from the WHO the decision about selection of Darnitsa as the only Ukrainian platform that will be involved in the uh, uh, RNA uh, products, which is not only about vaccines, but uh, the drugs of the future, uh, advanced technologies that will enable us to make advanced technologies closer to consumers, primarily Ukrainian consumers. I do believe that after the war, Ukraine will become a hub for Eastern Europe, for the Middle East region, and no, not just a supply of food and processed uh, food, but we will also be, and we already now largely are, a huge hub for medical product supply because, first of all, we do have capacities, we do have staff, and we, we do have the understanding of where the world is moving and what advanced technologies could be used. 
And uh, our vision of the future is positive. But of course, now the most important thing is victory and the health of our um, patients, our military men, and our hospital doctors. Uh, thank you, Matroshev.